We're back with Richard Underhill. Richard, what made you run for mayor? Well, you know, watching the whole Rob Ford debacle, and, and, it, and it, it's funny, before this year, 2014, it was, it was a debacle in that he was cutting children's breakfast programs or trying to do that and, and, and wrecking Transit City and all these sort of things, And which I think anyone who had any sort of inkling of what he was like on council would have known was very possible, that he's, he's kind of a, he's a bull in a china shop kind of guy. And, and I'd, um, actually, when he brought his first budget out, I went down and deputized at City Hall. And I, uh, it was kind of a fun deputization because I said I, I wanted to get through to him and so I, I made football references. I, I said, you so. know, if if this was Team Toronto and you're cutting the cutting the TTC, how are the players going to make it on time? And if you're cutting the breakfast programs, how are they going to be nourished enough to play the game? And if you're cutting daycare, how are they going to, you know, look after the kids and make the game? So I tried to I tried to put it in terms that he would that he would uh, understand. So that got me a taste of it. And I'd always been a sort of an avid follower of, of events at City Hall and and politics in general. And when it came around, I just, I couldn't stop myself. I just thought, you know, I got to do this. I got to try. And then I'll have, you know, skin in the game, as they say, and, uh, and, I'll, and I'll be able to come up with a platform that I think is reasonable and, and uh, hopefully, if nothing else, try and influence the conversation. And so that's what I did. And it's been an interesting run. You know, I haven't, I had a lot of great ideas. I think I'm, one of the things with my problems, I have too many great ideas, and it's hard to focus on, on what to do next. And uh, I didn't think I, I didn't capitalize on it the way I kind of wanted to. Part of the reason, of course, is that Olivia Chow got in the race, and people were like, "Well, why, you know, why are you bothering, right? Because she's she's got a lot of the same ideas that you do, and what's the, what's the point?" And one of the things that I've been actively campaigning for, and that I really hope we can get implemented, is the um, ranked ballot initiative, where you get to choose your top three. And then a person like me can still really have a meaningful role in an election because you could choose me as your first, Olivia as your second, John Tory as your third, and Rob Ford would probably never happen, and that's, that's probably a good thing. So it, it, it tends to, to bring a more representative, representative, <laughs> so to speak, to, to city government. So that's one thing that the previous council actually passed under Rob Ford because the council, you know, has has many many things it can do. But unfortunately, the provincial government was in, in the process of making it law, but the election happened. So we'll have to see if that can happen again because uh, I really think, in terms of democracy, they they do it in, in Minneapolis. They have forty seven percent visible minorities on council now. They had five percent before. They have a female mayor. They never had that before. So it allows for those local heroes to get some traction because usually there's a well-funded, party-affiliated person that's kind of dominating the, the situation or an incumbent that, that through name recognition and, you know, whatever gets, gets in because there's often several people running against them. So this way there can be several people running and still a good result can happen. And I'm really hopeful that we can get that going because... We obviously need a, we need to have more control about who we elect. Well, obviously you're good friends with Olivia. Um, mm -hmm. The last time I uh, did a great video was uh, you doing Into the Mystic at Jack's Memorial. Yeah. Um, that's actually my highest YouTube views is is your video doing uh, Into the Mystic. Over three thousand. I know it's just me, but <laughs> oh man, oh it's you know it's good to get it out there, and I. Uh, you know, it was quite an emotional moment, and, and uh, I was, you know, I was really honored to be chosen, and, and uh, you know, Olivia called me and said, we could do this, and I was like, yeah, of course, so um, it was a lot of pressure, and, and uh, it was just, it was kind of a surreal situation, you know, but uh, it was uh, it was really nice to be, to be able to have done, to have done that for Jack. Um, it was cool, because when Jack was running, you know, they actually, taking it back a, a few more years, I used to play at a patio on King Street, and Jack and Olivia would always ride by on their on their tandem, and they'd stop and watch for a tune, and we'd chat for a sec, and I'd always bump into them, you know, once a year, a couple times a year, I'd bump into Jack, and we'd chat, and, you know, he was a great guy, as you know. Then, when he was running for the leadership of the NDP, he actually called in some artists, myself and Lorraine Sagato, and some video people, and he said... Let's, what can you contribute to this? And so Lorraine Sagato and I wrote a song, and then I organized a video presentation 
and we we presented this at the beginning of his speech at the leadership convention. So that was really fun to be you know be associated that way and to make a positive contribution. And then you know I would show up at campaign events and that sort of thing. So it was it was really fun and it was really heartbreaking you know to see to see what happened to him when he was really close to you know his his goal and obviously he had that kind of spirit that people really identified with and that the kind of good populism you know Rob Ford has a different kind of populism but he had the, the populism that you know hopefully kind of tries to bring out the best in everyone and so yeah bittersweet it was indeed well in closing thoughts what do you uh, what do you want to talk about for the last few minutes oh I don't know uh, what should I talk about um, just a wild anecdote that may have happened to the demons or yeah, the demons. I, I gave you some of my good anecdotes. I'm trying to think of more anecdotes. Now, where were we going? India was cool. China was really fun. Oh, what happened to China? Yeah. Yeah, what was it? one thing that happened in China that was really cool, we were playing in Beijing, and there was this jam session. And, uh, and so we were like, okay, that's cool. Let's go to a, this jam session. And it was in a park in Beijing that... And, it was sort of in the center of town, and it was called the Stone Boat, and I think of the history of it is that one of the empresses of China in the old days spent more money constructing this beautiful boat in the middle of the park than she did on the Navy, and that actually, you know, didn't bode well for her reign or, or the actual uh, China in general. But um, the fun thing was we had to pry open these gates to get in, and there were, the, you know, a big chain, but if you pr push it far enough, you could kind of get into this thing in the middle of Beijing, and you know, we're like, what's going on? And we get in there and it's about 30% cool Chinese kids, and, and the bar staff is kind of cool, you know, 30, 25 to 40 year olds, and then the rest was all expats. And it was a really cool, cool party, and it's a really interesting scene when we were there in 2006, because there's tons of kids from America and, and Europe there working on, the, you know, the, the great capitalist revolution that, that was happening there at the time, and I'm sure is still kind of happening. So it was just a really interesting cosmopolitan mix of people. The funniest thing is, we were we were jamming at this jam session, and this is, you know, whatever, but we were jamming at the jam session, and we were kind of smelling something. So we're jamming at a jam session in a park in the middle of Beijing, and a hash joint comes up to us on stage. <laughs> this... This feels dangerous, guys. <laughs> but that's the funny thing. Like your average policeman in Beijing may not even know what that is. So that was a that was a really that was a really bizarre moment. But but kind of cool, you know, in in terms of all the weird things that we've done. Oh, that's awesome. Well, on that note, I'm gonna say <laughs> <laughs> there goes my campaign. Thanks, Billy. I don't know how you got that out of me, man. It must have been the beer. What I meant to say was this incredible beer came up to us, and I thought, that's weird. And it is musicians in bars getting beer. Richard Underhill, you've been one of my best guests ever, oh. and one of my best uh, musical friends ever. I've really appreciated uh, knowing you for uh, over 20 years now. So, Well, thanks for all the support over the years, too, Billy. It's always great when we see you at a gig or see you doing a post about something we're doing, you know. It makes you feel good to know that uh, to know we have people who like what we do and, and have been there all along. And you're so cooperative ever since Radio Seneca. I've been, you know, trying to get you on the air and uh, just my my best musical buddy, Richard Underhill. Thanks very much. Cheers, Billy. Thank you. Take care. Then. Yeah, man. And good luck in the election. Thank you. I'll need it. <laughs>